Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to my YouTube. If you're new to this channel, I'm IFBB Pro John Jewett. I'm documenting my prep for the New York Pro. Currently, I'm nine weeks out. For you guys that have been following along, welcome back. And I appreciate all y'all leaving comments and just supporting me along the way. And uh, it's, it's been a really good prep so far. So for this episode, I'm just going to go over my changes for the diet, talk a little bit about why I'm progressing the way I am, at least what I think and we'll get into a chest, delt, and tricep workout. Normally I have Matt on, but he wasn't feeling too great, so he, he took a break this week from videoing, but I will, uh, I will cover his end. Just a, a quick recap of last week. Uh, I had my body weight low, and I have my phone here, because I, I, I chart all my weights. I don't know if you, let's see, you can see it. I, I have all my morning weights. I started doing my night weights just because it give me, gives me some good insight of how food, um, foods I'm responding to the day, what my weight goes up to, and the drop overnight of water. Not everyone needs to do this, but I, it, I like it along the way because since I do have a weight class to make, it gives me some insight of like, all right, so if I weigh this at nighttime, I should be able to hit this weight by morning. And as prep goes on, I notice I will start dropping more overnight. So for a weigh-in, a morning weigh-in, which I have, I have to weigh in at like 8 a.m. I can now be like, all right, if I'm 2:15 at night, I should very be very close to 2:12 in the morning. So it just gives some insight with that. Um, but last week, my body weight low was 231.6. That was on a Wednesday morning, and I had those two refeed days, and that brought me up to 234.2. Now, since those refeeds last week, I haven't made any changes because we're trying to hit a new body weight low. And just with the idea that we, I just have a weight class to meet, so weight has to continue to come down. So the diet hasn't changed the whole week. Nothing exciting there. But uh, I think there has been some really good progress in my pictures. And I'm going to post them up so you can see them. Um, as far as like my waist has come down significantly, it looks very, very tight. I'm just tighter all over with throughout the hams and glutes. Uh, quads look even more rounder since I actually was able to get a, a, a training session and a heavy training session since my first, since I tore my rec fit. I have been training a new fit, but just training on my own how I normally would. And I think it brought up a lot of fullness in my legs that, that kind of was lacking over the past couple weeks. <clears throat> but overall, just generally tighter. So. Still no cardio, and diet has been the, the same base plan that we've had for several weeks now. And just to recap on that, and, and I'll, I'll have it below in the description. I'll keep posting my diet below, so because I have guys that keep asking questions about it. Um, it's roughly around 2,400 calories, 190 grams of carbs, 350 grams of protein, and 30 grams of fat. And those are just counting direct sources like direct fat sources, direct protein sources, and carbohydrate sources. No incidentals are counted in that. <clears throat> so it's a quick count. Um, so rode that diet out for the last, um, so that was since Saturday. Last Saturday, I've been on my base plan and I've been on that all the way till for seven days, the Saturday. That's when I hit a new body weight low and I was 230.6, so about a pound. And I did one refeed day so far, and my weight actually went down again to 230.4. <clears throat> so it just kind of shows you, we've already, I've talked about this in a past video, like a weight drop when you have a refeed, and it just gives you some insight into physiologically where, you're, where your body's at and how much you're able to do a refeed. So, for, and this might be covered next week, try to let Matt address it. But so for this next day, since my weight dropped, we're just adding in more carbohydrates for another refeed day. <clears throat> but for progress, it's, it's, been, it's been great this week. I think a lot of people have asked me, gosh, you come in so quick, you know, and how are you not doing any cardio? And I'll tell you like, this is not the norm for me. I've, I'm the guy doing like the two 45 minute sessions at the end with like, you know, less than hundred grams of carbs. Like I, I've never had a prep like this. So this isn't normal for me at all. Every prep has been co one completely different. So you can't just look at what you've done in the past and try to repeat it because it's not going to work the same. 
And why I think it is the way it is, is I was in off season for like a year and a half eating a high calorie amount. I mean, I've, I got my food up. I had to be close to 4,500 or 5,000 calories. I just have food amounts. I'm not, I don't really look at the total value, but I know it was, it was really high. And being at such a high level, you have, you have a lot to work with to come down. So you can, you can make a lot of calorie deficit and still have a lot of carbohydrates in place. Like 190 grams for me is low compared to what I was in the off season. And that's been enough to keep progressing. If you have a short off season period and you're only able to get your food up, you know, a small amount, you're, it's going to take a lot to make that deficit, you know? So yeah, I have, you know, female clients that come to me like 1500 calories in their off season and, and doing cardio. And it's like, where do you go from there? You know, it's, you, you can drop 10% calories and all of a sudden you're already at a thousand calories and, and what's left, you know, just to add in cardio. So that's why I just say it's so important to take your off season serious and not just add calories in and get your calories high, but also keep good conditioning and do it slow over time. So that's the, I think the keys to starting a really good prep is have done your work in the off season. Just it's a, a continuation of a contest diet just with more food and keeping a, a very strict eye on visual changes making sure you you stay relatively lean because then again if your calories are high but you start prep in, in a really you know fat state it's gonna you're gonna be chasing fat loss the whole time and you're gonna have the even greater calorie deficit to do so and it won't be productive um, with outside of that I, I will say just genetically I drop fat very quickly um, I, I've my first time working with Matt I did a 12 week prep for the USA's and uh, I th think I, if I recall right, we went down from, from I cut down from 215 to 175. So, um, you know, like 40 pounds <laughs> of a weight loss in 12 weeks, which is significant. So, I mean, I can drop weight very, very fast. So that's just genetically something that I can do. Not everyone's going to be able to do it. So I have people like, wish my prep was like that. Well, there's certain things you can do to make it like that, but also you need to realize like your genetic predisposition, you know, Think about before you training, what was your body composition like? What's your parents' body composition like? Do you, do you feel like you have genetically able to stay very, very lean? But anyway, that's the update for the week. So again, diet is below. Um, if you wanna contact me or Matt for coaching, I have that in the description below. Uh, let's go ahead, I'll, I'll take y'all through my chest and tricep and side delt workout. And let's get to it. So guys, we're at the Muscle Factory Day. I'm doing my chest workout. This is my workout B. I'm gonna rotate through some exercises and let's get going. Starting with incline at carrying press. Uh, start with that just for an incline press movement to work the upper chest. I like this one, it has a nice range of motion. It kind of squeezes the handles in. I'm um, just going to warm up, go by plate, add a plate, and keep working up to a, uh, two work sets. Do a top set, seven to 10 reps, back off the weight, and do something around 12 to 15. Set up on these, notice I'm really pushing back into my traps. That's where you should feel the tension on the, on the uh, backrest. Squeeze the shoulder blades back, pull them slightly down, chest elevated up a lot. That's gonna really be able to get you to a, a, a short chest to a full shortened state. So last time I did four plates and a quarter for seven reps. So let's see what we try to match that or beat it. I'm not gonna go up and wait this time. First set, I actually did eight reps, so I actually improved a little bit, which is great. I back down to three plates and a quarter. Last time I hit 11 reps. Let's see if we can best that. So we 
add another rep to that set too. It's the final set, so I'll move on. People ask me about like also weight progression and reps on prep. So ideally, if you can maintain your intensity, even if you're decreasing volume, like dropping off sets, that'll maintain muscle mass during prep better than adding in more sets or decreasing your weight. So try to hold your weight the best you can, hit the same reps. It's a much easier progression to you know, add a five plate to each side and hit the same reps versus trying to add another rep onto the same weight. Percentage-wise, if you look at total volume, weight times reps times sets, adding 10 pounds is not that much greater volume. So look at your progressions that way. I do like the Smith machine because it's pretty controlled so I can really focus on the antenna muscle group. For setup, uh, try to keep my, just definitely keep your feet planted, pushing your body back into your traps, just like on the, the carrying press. But keep your scapula retracted and down, chest up. Uh, take, I put my pinkies on the ring, so structurally it's gonna depend on how long your arms are. And, um, but for, for this one, I'm just gonna be warming up and doing the same protocol on the, the previous lift. So set of eight to 10, and then set of 12 to 15. So two, two work sets, but take as many warm ups as I need to get up to that. Log all my workouts in my phone. I'm not texting. Number one, last time I did three plates and a 10, I hit six reps. I'm gonna do the same weight, just try to meet those reps or exceed them. It was really good, so I added another rep on. So being very consistent, adding a rep on to all these sets so far, which is good. Last, for this training day, uh, I haven't had a refeed in like seven days. And this was an all time low for my body weight for the week. I was 231.2, so in strength's there. It's improving. Pump's not quite there, Some somewhat, somewhat flat. But uh, again, looking at performance, the strength's there, so I'm, I'm holding tissue well. Last set, I did two plates and a quarter. Hit 11 reps last time, this time I hit 10. No big deal overall, I am thinking I'm showing good improvements in maintenance. I I'd used a little bit shorter rest period that could be in it, but hey, one rep, I'm not, not sweating it at all. Moving on from here, going to hammer strength shoulder plus. So my normal setup has been an incline chest press, a flat chest press, then a shoulder press. Then from there, I move on to more metabolic work, supersets. Um, more isolation movements for chest and shoulders. So I try to hit those three compounds first thing every day. So this rotation, tamer strength shoulder press, just keep warming up. Again, get to two working sets from there. So in these warm ups, I'm, I'm pretty warm. It's more just to neurologically get used to that movement and if it feels smooth then I can increase in weight so I'm only only doing four or five reps uh, it's not a lot it's just trying to get my body acclimated to the weight increase to get up to that work set so I don't want to exhaust myself by any means 
by doing an excessive amount of reps and fatiguing myself before I get to my true working sets. That was work set number one. Last time I hit 10 reps with three plates, hit the same thing again. Next work set, I'll drop to two plates and a quarter. Last time I got nine reps, so we'll see if I can, we can beat that. set so I actually did 11 reps so I really fought for that last one but that was two, was two reps better than last time so next I'm gonna move into a superset of pec deck chest fly and decline hammer strength press I'm gonna do three sets there a little bit higher reps try to get more blood flow pump metabolic stress built up um, rep wise aiming around 12 to 15 on that first set to failure Stick with the same weight and reps are gonna drop as I go. On the pec deck fly, with all these chest movements again, trying to keep my scapula retracted, pulled back uh, towards the full contraction. You wanna really avoid pushing the shoulders and arms forward, and bring it, bringing them into play. Keep, keep those shoulder blades glued back in place. On the decline hammer strength press, just make sure the seat is plenty of low. I see a lot of guys that go too high, and it looks like the bar path is, or the handle path is, is traveling to mid abdomen, so it's just a lot of tricep. So you still want it to get pretty close to your sternum level, nipple level, to get that full, good chest contraction. So it's a give and take here. So on the pec deck last time I did the stack, but I hit 16 reps. This time I hit 13, but I feel like at the end, I just kept my strict form. A lot of people will start bringing other muscles into play to get those last couple, so. Might have dropped a little bit, but I think overall the, the form stayed really strict. But on the decline press, I actually added two reps. So, have to weigh that out. I think overall it's maintaining training volume. So I move on to a dumbbell lateral raise. Hit side delt. I've been doing a muscle round, so I get questions on these muscle rounds. And it's six sets of four reps with 15 second rest periods. In the last set, you just get as many as you can. So it's a normally a weight, if you were to do a straight set, it's probably a weight you would do for maybe 15 reps. That's about the work weight you should use. But instead, you're gonna be doing 24 plus reps. So it's a way to get more training volume in. Now, it's not something I would use as like a first exercise because it's not focused on heavy loading, which I think that should be your emphasis when you're starting. But it's good towards the end, trying to build up metabolic stress and a way to build in more training volume. Now, during prep, if you start seeing the muscle round drop off, that's when I would take it out and replace it with maybe two straight sets. Something that is less volume, but you can maintain training intensity or weight. So just, just we'll do just one of these and move on from there. So, did one extra rep. So most rounds are staying in for now. Gonna move on to barbell upright row.
we're going to end on triceps. We're just going to do two exercises and a superset. So I'll start with the easy bar grip, a push down, and then go straight into an overhead extension. So with the push down, working more lateral head, you hit some long head. Then moving to the, the overhead extension, when those elbows rise up, it puts more stretch in the medial head. So you also hit that part of the tricep. A lot of overhead extensions are, for some people are hard on the elbows, so you're pre-fatiguing on the push down and the overhead extension for one you'll be more warm for, but also you won't be able to go as heavy too. So it's kind of a dual benefit there. So I'll just do three sets hitting around 15 to 20 reps. So I keep the reps higher also, thinking about elbow safety in mind. A lot of the heavy weight I did today for pressing is a good tricep stimulus for loading. This is more getting into me more metabolic work, so I'm, I'm okay just leaving the reps higher on my tricep work. So yeah, this is the hardest thing I've done all the whole, whole day. That's a wrap guys, all done. All right guys, that concludes the week. Thanks for tuning in and watching, really appreciate it. Leave comments below, questions for me and Matt, we'll make sure to answer that on Wednesdays at 6 p.m. Central Time on IG Live. I'm doing a Q&A, you're welcome to drop in, ask me any questions. On Tuesdays I post up the topic and you can also you can leave your questions in the, in the comment section there. Uh, also, any coaching inquiries, you can send them to ironlinknutrition at yahoo.com. I coach clients for contest prep, off-season, and just general fitness and transformation. Make sure you like the video, subscribe, and we will talk to you next week. We'll be eight weeks out.